Number one. All right. So I'm here. Me and Michael. Right. Um, we are from the band. Tonic. Well, I don't know if it's still going to be called Tonic Structure anyway. But that's what uh, it was originally. Yes. What year was that? 2010. Yep. In the year 2010, we began as a band, right? Um, as sort of a, I guess, experimental. It really was all about experimental. Extreme, but experimental. We wanted heavy metal to be a, definitely a part of the, the influence. Obviously, uh, Michael brought to the band uh, "Bring Me the Horizon." I never listened to them before, and uh, Black Veil Brides and them, them groups. And uh, I suppose I brought the what the, the Pink Floyd stuff like that and um just kind of blend the two uh, tool I mean a perfect circle uh, definite blends yeah like yeah. Michael said you yeah, Michael yeah. with your music influence it was more of the dark though right like yeah. not not necessarily that it makes it bad or nothing that's not what I'm saying I mean in like uh your, the meaning that you have was more of um, dedicated for people who've been through certain yeah. experiences, yeah. yeah. And um, would you like to share certain experiences that you know were weren't as detrimental as, to you as uh, you know the other ones? We don't have to go into, or et cetera. Huh? I mean, just one example of a song that might you know like. Uh, Thanks. Thanks for nothing. Like, thanks for nothing. Exactly. We got... I mean, me and you both had the same kind of influence, though, at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Where it was, uh... We kind of did split off, though, in a, uh... It's kind of a weird genre we started forming into, especially... When, um... People actually requested the albums. Yeah. And we're still... We're actually getting the requests. Yeah. You know, and, and, um... Jericho. <laughs> people like that. Well, cool. But they didn't know that we played, though. That's the thing. You never even told him. <laughs> well, where it's getting us somewhere. Yeah, I let Dalton take the a demo, our old demo mm -hmm. of Dreaming Up This Misperceived Reality, um, the first CD that we actually ever uh, burned. And he said that he loved it. Like, mm -hmm. quite honestly, that the sounds he showed his mom, and he said they were creepy. Whoops. Of course she would think it's creepy. Yeah, of course. All Everybody adults, did. All adults think our music is creepy. I remember hearing him a lot. His mom, she yeah. said it was somewhat she satanic. Said it was satanic. Yeah. Like it was a seance of some sort. My uh, uh, introductions to certain songs. And then me and Michael, we created a couple introductions that sounded apparently satanic. Where, uh, That's funny. That introduction was what? Uh, the ones when we were doing the, the weird vocals. The parts, remember the arf, and then you you were yeah. laughing in that yeah, one that part. Was yeah, that just came together though. It wasn't even planned out that uh, we, we just started. Much just started recording, just went with it. Yeah, just went with it. The flow came through, and uh, the mix came through very well too. I was, I was with certain songs, though, I was disappointed with. I'm sure Michael was too. You know, yeah. I mean, we you kind of had a habit of over affecting it. Oh yeah, overdubbing it. Yeah, I always wanted. To make it, you know, something immaculate, something flawless, something... The whole shebang, you know what I mean? I wanted somebody to, like, listen to it and be, like, taking an awe and wondering, like... Um, I wanted them to wonder about the music itself and to actually go in depth and analyze it. But <clears throat> it really did eventually come out more into overdubbing with um, ambient sounds. And so now we've got... A couple of other people in the band. If we can ever get him to practice. Oh, yeah, well, we will. You know, I mean, even Brandon Daney, we can get him to practice. Yeah. It'd be easy. I just got to give him a call. I just don't have his number. He's on Facebook. But anyway, he is uh, a rapper. He's bringing the different style to it, but he's got apparently an electric drum set, which we need a drummer, so that will help very much. So. Yeah. And then uh, we got Reese. Your cousin, um, is a very sensational guitarist, you know, I mean, I, when I listened to him, I was pretty, uh, I was taken in awe, you know, I was, you know, it just, um, 
he just takes a little bit to warm up, and that's all. And then yeah. when you get him going, it's good. But all the rag is in my cousin. I thought he was. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we got it on record. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not exactly sure about Reese being in the band. Kind of said that he wouldn't, he wouldn't be able to be in the band. I see that. Yeah. Well, it's not that we we already kind of knew that uh, some things were getting in the way there. Yeah. That we don't need to go on that. So, I guess, what the main thing is about Tonic Structure, now that I have Michael here for, like, a slight interview for YouTube, is that, um, since it was made in 2010, in, considering that it's 2012 now, it's been two years and still unsigned as a band, but still creating music. And it doesn't matter if you're un, unsigned or not, you can still make music doesn't matter about that and it doesn't matter about the money it really matters about the creative potential and the yeah. flow That's what matters. and uh, the message that you want to push out to the audience is what really does take it and um, if we get the right message out we'll get the right audience and we'll get the right people it doesn't even matter if right or wrong you know what I mean I'm just yeah, saying just uh, an audience an audience we would just like an any audience at that you know yeah. even if it's just out of barn could be the barn, you know, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> barn stage thing. Yeah. I know Trina. She mentioned that we could use that, but she's gone now. <coughs> she's an older friend of mine. Mm -hmm. she's like hippie chick. Well, she's like fifty or sixty. Mm -hmm. But she was. But anyway, at any rate. Um, a lot of songs, like, uh, Someday, were recorded with, um, my sister, uh, Courtney Stewart, who was on the drums, and, um, well, we did the beginning to the end, I remember, and <clears throat> it was just an impromptu, it was just total improv, and, uh, you know, um, I remember I was like, come on, come on, come on, and like, you know, I was nodding at her to, you know, start the thing, and that's when she started with the, the high top, and she was like, Ch -ch 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 -ch, and, um, she actually pulled that off really nicely. I yeah. liked how that came together. And then, uh, well, uh, well, with Someday, we had, uh, yeah. Hannah Melodis. And, uh, her and Courtney sang while me and you were, we were all singing at the same time. Yeah. All the same words at the same time. And, uh, I wanted it, sadly, we didn't record it on separate vocals, so we couldn't get the harmonic part that was what I wanted. I wanted to get a really good feel of harmonic. Yeah. But, um, we still got, you know, it still sounded good. Yeah, it did. And then, uh, we, uh, sort of branched off into, uh, more of an experimental, into, uh, even recent Spiral Out was not really a, uh, I'm not gonna consider it one of the best, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was, uh, just experimental, and the live shows, though, is what would count, you know, um, because live performances, we, I'm 100% sure that we could play without a doubt, and bring the music, and bring yeah. the, bring the oomph that ne needs Definitely. to be, and, uh, uh, it's just sad that it's, it's hard to get a show playing, especially when you don't have a drummer, or, you know, those kind of people are bassists, especially, but, well, considering that you ha are playing bass now. Yeah, it's, I, need to, I need to get a bass. Well, either way, I mean, you were always good at, you know, improvising with a guitar, and, yeah. you know, it didn't take long for you to learn at all, so, I mean, even Dalton wants to learn yeah. with guitar, yeah. Cool. He's, he's got his own guitar, he said, and uh, he's got his own amp and everything at the house, so mm -hmm. he said he was practicing, actually, last time I heard him, cool. and, uh... I gave him the guitar for a little bit, and he was practicing a little bit here, too, and it sounded interesting. So, what well, our main I ideals are coming here is anybody can play. Anybody who's got musical talent. It doesn't matter if you're, like, let's say, a Sid Barrett mastermind genius <laughs> or a, you know, um, a Roger Waters kind of a hard cookie, you know what I mean? Or whatever. It doesn't matter who you are. You can bring music to anybody and bring... A pleasure to the ears and I mean sight 
especially with theatrics. I'm I'm sure you know you can jump around on stage and do some crazy things, but um, I you guess don't necessarily, you don't necessarily need to do anything like Iggy and the Stooges did, though. Oh no, but you know, there's still there's going to be that aspect that you know everybody wants to, when they go to a show they want to see something that they'll remember the band by, right. you know what I mean so there's you got the uh, even with Green Day you know the dude jumps up in the air and spreads his legs apart and he's all like Poop! he comes back down right when he lands down he starts singing again well that, that was his big thing you know what I mean everybody's got their own thing Pink Floyd had the whole psychedelic thing going for him uh, the wall all that stuff and theirs was the theatrical part yeah. with the wall it was a big theatrical you know I mean it was what was it 19... 79 or it was 80 or something like that when they played in New York but when they built the wall well, they built the wall up throughout the whole show and then at the end of the show it's all torn down you know so I guess every band brings their their kind of soup to the kitchen you know what I mean and it's it's all different and that's the pleasure about doing music is is everything can be it can be all different but you know when you actually see somebody who enjoys your music it it definitely uplifts your uh, morale and confidence definitely boosts it and brings about more music especially definitely yeah that's for sure no we all stop it here but do a part two right yeah. all right so stop recording i'm trying to click on